welcome at the Richelieu Vlog. As you can see behind me, we're at FAX today. I'm going to show you the booths, uh, what you can eat. I'm going to show you some actors and maybe we're going to join the Q&A session of Andrew Alexander Ludwig. Not sure yet, but we will see. Are you going to join me on this adventure? Thank you. 
let's walk up to them. As you can see, there are not any photo shoots right now, but they will be soon. And well, I can actually just film this sign right here so I don't have to uh, walk up to there. We have Alexander Ludwig, Daniel Gillies, Katie Long, Tyler Kuchlin, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Lucy Paul, and of course Kylie Sol, who are sitting right over there. So a few people ask me, like, uh, can I take things with me to the booth? Yes, you can. But of course, you have to pay for that as well. Uh, you can take memorabilia, DVDs, books, whatever you want. Well, not naked things, you know, not weird things, but yeah, you can have that signed. Some people choose white paper, like a notebook or something, but no, don't do that. Just take something cool. Maybe your own picture with the actor, you know? Make a photo booth picture first and then let it, sign, let it be signed at the end. Right? That would be cool. And today you can also meet Samson and Marie. Uh, in my childhood it was uh, Samson and Gert, but now it's Samson and Marie. Uh, it's for free, so you don't have to pay anything. Uh, but it can take a while until it's your uh, turn. So yeah, there it is. Samson and Marie. So this is the stage, how it looks like for the Q&A session. It's a steampunk theme, as you can see. And Alexander is going to sit in one of these chairs. Are you ready? Always. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> you know, if Billy uh, Boyd would be there, he would say, look at my little hobby chair. Isn't it great? But sadly, and the mushrooms. And the mushrooms over here. So, very nice mushrooms. <laughs> Unfortunately, Billy Boyd is not here. <laughs> so, this is what Alexander will see, be seeing, like, all the being filmed. But these are the chairs. Look at that. We'll be sitting right there with the camera over there. <laughs> that's where we are sitting, because this is a VIP area. And, let's face it, it's not like... I think it's too much money to pay for the chair to sit there. Yeah. Yeah. You have a good view from, from where we are sitting, so... So now, Alexander Ludwig. Good afternoon, my name is Emmanuel, I'll be hosting. As you can see, there are two microphones, one on my left, one straight ahead. That's where you should ask any old questions you have for Alexander. Few ground rules, English only, maximum two questions per person. Please articulate, speak directly in the microphone, and please don't ask for free hugs, free pictures, or anything free. Don't be shy, this is your unique opportunity to ask any question you always wanted. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Alexander Ludwig. This is amazing. Thank you. Welcome, Alexander. First question. We saw in Vikings uh, a lot of uh, very beautiful scenes. Were most part of the series filmed in the studio or at a location? So any any um, scene when you see the inside of a place is usually filmed on a studio and it's built. Anything outside, you can't fake that. So that's usually um, out, outside in, in nature. And that's something that I love so much about Vikings was that my job every day was getting to be surrounded by these magnificent Irish landscapes because we filmed in, in Dublin, Ireland. Um, and uh, I'll miss it, you know, because very few people get a chance to experience that as an actor on a daily basis for as long as I did. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Hi, who uh, was it? Uh, sort of uh, Ragnar. Oh, it was uh, you know it was one of the great experiences of my life. Um, I always look back, <clears throat> you know, when I I was first offered Vikings when I was about nineteen or twenty years old, uh, and I'm thirty now. And when I when I 
first got offered it, or maybe it was like 21, um, I had said no because it was a huge commitment overseas um, and it was on the History Channel and I didn't know who was going to see it or if I should do it. Um, and of course, after watching season one, I was like, it doesn't really matter. Like, this is the kind of show that I want to be a part of as an actor. Um, so it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. There are very few actors in the world who get to show this kind of an arc over time. I mean, you see Bjorn as a child and you leave him as this, you know, legend with, with uh, family. Uh, and it's an incredible opportunity and I'm so unbelievably grateful for that. I will say, you know, Travis, so much credit is to him and the original cast. Um, they set up uh, an amazing world that I wasn't a part of. So it was huge shoes to fill for me. Um, but I feel like as I grew, um, as, as the character, I felt like I grew, I grew up as a, as a human. Um, so very naturally, uh, we were able to kind of, uh, pass the sword, so to speak, and, uh, and take over where, after Ragnar's passing, spoiler alert, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, one of the big things in Viking is the accents, so I was wondering how hard was it for you to learn the accents, uh, how much did you struggle, how long did it take, and did you have any words that you struggled to say with the accent? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, warrior. Like, I'll never forget, we were doing a scene and I had to be super, super intense. And I said, um, it is me and all these warriors. And they all started laughing. And I was like, what? They said, you said warriors. I said, shit. And I tried to do it again and I did it again. Uh, the great thing about that accent is uh, nobody knows what the Vikings sounded like. You know, um, we have an idea of what they could have sounded like, but nobody can watch that and go, oh, that's not how they sounded. Um, so we had a dialect coach on set um, who kind of blended uh, a version of Icelandic and Norwegian accents and Scandinavian accents uh, into one uh, and mid-Atlantic accents. And um, you kind of got to make it your own. So once you fall into, fell into that rhythm, it was like second nature. Um, and it really does help you get into character, you know, getting to put on that accent and be surrounded by these magnificent sets. You, know, you feel like you're, you're a Viking. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, did Gato find his knife uh, in the Hunger Games? I'm still looking for it, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I love your work and your music. Oh, um, thank you. And my question was, what was a quote from Vikings that stayed with you? It's in Old Norse. It's... And it means uh, when spring comes and my blood starts to boil, I want to raid and I want to fight. I just always remember that. I don't know why. That was fun. Yeah. All right, uh, Alexander, final question. If you were to interview yourself, what question would you ask yourself? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's a boring question, but I think it's a great one because I always ask myself, like, what am I doing here? Like, why am I being interviewed? You know, what's the purpose of this? Like, it's not just so, it's not so I feel good. Uh, so I think that it's something that people could take away from the interview. So it's, um, you know, what is, what, what's the advice you give yourself? Or if you wanted, you know, to be an actor, what would you do? Or something to do with, um, just some sort of knowledge that people could take home with them, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for. Give it up for Thank you guys so much.
dropped Tamara at some uh, Dungeon and Dragon thing. So now it's time to see the Q&A session of Katie Loon. It's approaching just mere seconds away. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Katie Loon. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How's the country treating you so far? Oh my god, so well. Everyone's treating me really well. I'm so happy to be here again. Um, I was here three years ago um, in Brussels, not Ghent. Um, and it's where I met my partner. Wow. And, um, and since we've had a baby. Wow. So thank you, Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I brought him with me. Not to the convention, but um, he's in the hotel right now, and he's having such a great time. Really? Um, so I think he knows, like, yeah. <laughs> so Belgium will always have a soft spot for you. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. So, first question. Hi. Hi, my name is Joy. Um, Hello. Welcome to Belgium. Thanks. Um, my question is, um, if you had a time turner, which scene would you do again, and which line would you do again? Which scene? Um, oh God, it's it's always like the case with an actor. Like we always watch ourselves back on screen, and then we think, "Oh, I could have done that better." So if I could choose, I'd choose all of them. But I think um, for me, I'm trying to think the one that I regret the most <laughs> doing, probably the probably the kissing scene. Or maybe, or maybe the first time we see Cho on the steps when she's coming down. I remember making a really bad decision about my hair uh, because I was so nervous. It was my first day on set and um, the director asked me how I wanted my hair. I was just, just I, I was completely thrown because I wasn't expecting this question. So then I was like, uh, just uh, maybe some strands at the front. And yeah, it just looked awful on screen. It's just I had all this hair over my face, you can even see it. Um, so yeah, I'd probably do that scene again. And which line from Arcane is your favorite? <gasps> which line? Um, oh, that's a hard one, because I, I feel like I really enjoy all the scenes between um, Vi and Caitlin and like the moments they have. That the most precious moments are the ones where they don't say anything to each other. Um, but if I had to choose a line, probably when Vi calls her cupcake and she says, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's a really cute moment. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. First of all, congratulations. And it's a beautiful name, Wolf. Thank you. Uh, how was it? These five months. Oh, five months. Okay, so because I was going to ask a question, but he's too young. Whether you would already think in what house he would be, or <laughs> oh, <laughs> and how he's too young. Oh no, I haven't no. thought about that. Um, I think Slytherin springs to mind. Oh, okay. Ambition. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why. Partly because he's quite skeptical. So when he meets like a new person or he's in a new environment, he's always, he's very curious and he looks around and people see him as being judgmental, but I don't think so. I think he's just curious, but he's definitely, he's not like friendly from, from the get go. He has to kind of get to know you, suss you out. Gosh. Yeah, and he squeals like a cat. Ooh. So I've named him Will, but he squeals like a little kitten. So it's really cute, but I'm also like, come on, Will. <laughs> how to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, how did you learn about the audition? My dad was watching TV, and he it was, it was the Chinese news he was watching at the time. And every evening after the, the news has been broadcast, they have like a little bulletin board of things that are happening within the community in Britain for Chinese people. 
Um, and it was just that particular evening uh, on this bulletin board, they were saying they were casting the role of Cho Chang in London at Pineapple Studios. It was an open edition, anybody could attend. So if you were 16 and you looked Asian, then you should go and give it a try. So that's, so my dad saw this on the TV and then he came running to the dining room uh, where I was doing my art homework and he was like, Katie, hey, there's this um, audition happening in London for this role that they're trying to cast in the Harry Potter movies. Would you like to go to London? And I said, don't be ridiculous, dad. And then he was like, well, it's on a Saturday. You're not, you're not at school and I'm off work. It's my only day off work. So why don't we take a trip down and um, bond? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, so then we, yeah, we went to London and we queued for a long time and through a series of workshops and additions, I, you know, they kind of, yeah, it, the, the, the number of people who were, who were up for, for the role became smaller and smaller and eventually I was asked to go to Leavesden Studios where they filmed the where they filmed the movies, and they they took me into Gryffindor Common Room to do a screen test with the director and the producers. And I remember meeting Rupert and Dan there, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm in the Gryffindor Common Room. Um, I've just met Harry and Ron." And then they asked me to reenact a scene where Cedric Diggory dies, and I had to I had to just improvise with this. Um, actor that they, they asked to come in to act alongside with me um, and so I did that and I cried my eyes out um, and then they cast me so yeah <laughs> thank you thank you okay guys put your hands together and give a big warm Belgian welcome seen that exit sign that means it's unfortunately the end of our video so if you like the video give a big thumbs up hey <laughs> it's you Mario have you uh, caught some ghosts it's very good oh. <laughs> if you like the video give a big thumbs up consider subscribing while you're here here we have a video about the last facts you went to here we got a video about Brussels and here we got a video about Elftopia we will see you next time <laughs> bye bye Thank you.